أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين والمرسلين محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين ومن استنى سنتهم واهتدى بهديهم وتبعهم بخير وأحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد uh, First for the organization of the course as I understood we will have on Mondays and Thursdays right based on the voting and this time is suitable from five right or one hour and 15 minutes um if you would like to suggest another place or you know another room that might be more suitable then we can discuss this after we finish so that i can book this room periodically in these days okay so just remind me after we are done, inshallah. Uh, the plan for now is to uh, have one day for uh, Quran and Hadith. Quran, it means the tafsir of Quran and Hadith. And another day for the other subjects, that is Aqeedah and Fiqh uh, and Seerah. And Sira is the story of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the skills of da'wah, skills of da'wah can be divided or shared between the two days. Okay. Uh, today, inshallah, since it's the first day, we will have an introduction to the da'wah and the skills and why we are doing it. Uh, the material of the uh, books, there, there are material in English for the tafsir, or the seerah, or the fiqh. I'm trying to get a good translation for the aqidah, but for the skills of da'wah, you need, you need to take notes of that. And if I find some good translation for it, I will share it with you. Other than that, this is a subject, when I studied it myself, I was taking notes. Um, for those of you who would like to have a certificate with the material, there will be some assignments throughout the course to make sure that you digested the material. And this will be, I know that you are already busy with, with, with studying other subjects. Uh, so these types of assignments will be quite short. That does not require uh, effort. It will be mostly practical things, or uh, if it is in writing, it will be uh, quite short, <clears throat> just to make sure that you understood the actual material, okay? Any questions or comments so far before I start? No? So we start, inshallah. <clears throat> so today we will talk about a da'wah ilallah, the concept, the targets, and the means. We'll introduce that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better than those who call people to Allah and they do good deeds and say we are Muslims. So three things. To call people to Allah and do the good, the good deeds yourself and then define yourself as a Muslim. Three things in this ayah. So to be a real Muslim, you need to call people to Allah, be a role model yourself, and say then to people, hello, I am Muslim. If you are not calling people to Allah, if you are shy to call people to Allah, uh, or if you are uh, not, not following Islam yourself, 
then it will be harmful for you and for Islam to present to people that you are Muslim. And you have to know that there is a lot of people who are away from Islam today, even they know Islam from the internet, because they say that we look at the Muslims, we don't like how they are. So this type of non-practicing uh, Muslims who, who are saying that they are Muslims, but they are not, they, this is a reason to keep people away from the path of Allah. So this ayah, and it is in Surah Fussilat, ayah number 33. Surah Fussilat, ayah number 33. This ayah should be the main guide to you in the path of Dao. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين. This is ayah uh, number 108 in Surah Yusuf. 108 in Surah Yusuf. This is my path. I call to Allah based on guidance and knowledge for myself and those who follow me. Then let's first start. What is da'wah? What is it? Da'wah is a method to bring iman. Da'wah is a method to bring iman. And iman is something that you cannot touch, you cannot sense, you cannot catch, you cannot see. And Iman is to believe and to sincerely believe in the unseen things. This is the definition of Iman, believe. Because if, if I want to say that I have a laptop at the front of me because I can see it, this is not Iman because it is at the front of me. There is no way to deny it. If I see that there is a building here or something that I can see, or there is a voice, I can hear you. So it is undeniable. This is not Iman. But Iman is to believe in the existence of something that I cannot see, I cannot hear. And this is called Ghaib. Ghaib. Ghaib in, in Arabic, it means absence something that is absent and absence it can be place wise or time wise place wise um uh, or uh, yeah space wise are things that that exist now but we cannot see them we cannot see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is present now, but we cannot see him. We cannot see the angels. We know that every one of us has two angels, one on the right writing the good deeds and on the left writing the bad deeds. But we don't see them. We know that there are jinn. Every one of us has shaitan from jinn. And this shaitan has a job. Starts with you from the day that you are born until the day you die and this shaitan has a job to take you away from jannah and to put you in jahannam his job is to make you kafir so that you stay for good in jahannam and he can either fulfill his job fully so that you become kafir and you die as kafir or can fulfill his job partially that you are still muslim but you are a sinner muslim so you do a lot of sins which can lead you to stay some time in Jahannam, but you will be taken out of Jahannam because you are Muslim. Or he can fail his job that you become a religious Muslim, a good Muslim, so that you don't touch, Jahannam doesn't touch you. This shaitan is ghaib. So these are things that 
exist now, but we cannot sense them. Then there is ghaib about things time-wise. Like Yawm al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment. This is something that will happen in the future. And this is right for us. There are things that happened in the past. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about the miracles of Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam, that the sea was divided for Musa alayhi salam. Did any one of us see this? No, this is something that happened in the, in the past. Can we verify that? No, we believe in it just because it is in the Quran. Did we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. Did we see Isa alayhi salam bringing the dead people alive or uh, curing the, the sick people? We did not see any of that. So this is also ghaib for us. Iman is to believe in ghaib. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. This is the book. There is no doubt about this book. Guidance for al-muttaqeen, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described who they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, number one, الذين يؤمنون بالغيب Those who believe in al-ghayb. Number two, وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they perform the salah in the proper way. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they spend from what we have given to them. We give the zakah. And then there are other qualities. But the first thing was الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ And again, Da'wah is a method to collect Iman. Da'wah is a method to collect Iman. There is one thing, one very important thing about Iman, since it is unseen. There are times when Iman is accepted and there are times when Iman is not accepted. What are the times of acceptance of Iman? Any time during your life, as long as you have not seen the angels of death. What is that? We are now living in dunya. People might think that Akhirah is Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment. This is not true. Yawm Al-Qiyamah is one step in Akhirah. Your Akhirah starts when you die. So you moved from dunya to Akhirah. So those who already died from your family members, from the people that you know, they already moved from dunya to Akhirah. When we are in dunya, we have material bodies. We need to eat food because we need to feed these bodies. We have limits. We cannot, as I said, we cannot see the angels. We cannot see the jinn. Despite the fact that there are animals and there are creatures who can see the angels and can see the jinn. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in one hadith, that uh, if you hear the voice of a roster, he saw an angel or it saw an angel. And if you see the, if you hear the voice of a donkey, a donkey has seen a shaitan. So those animals, they can see angels and shayateen. We cannot see them. Now, when you are in this dunya and you move, from dunya to akhirah, there is a transition period. Very small one. For some people, have you ever heard about someone when he's dying or she's dying, 
smiling and saying, I'm, I'm seeing a very nice place. And then the people around him or around her don't see anything. What is that? This person is in the transition between dunya and akhirah. In this transition period between dunya and akhirah, you are still having one foot in dunya, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed this covering from your eyes so you can see or hear some things from akhirah. And this is proven from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Those who said, we worship Allah, and they go in the straight path, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels come to them in the time of their death. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And they will tell them, don't be afraid. Don't be sad. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ And be happy with the Jannah that you are promised. So anyone who is dying is afraid of death because it's pain, uh, it's a transition from life to, to another life. So you need someone to calm you down. People will be able to see the angels of death during that transition period, either the angels of mercy or the angels of azab. And this is why you can see, or you, or, or you, you may know a lot of incidents where people who died and they are smiling. And you can see some pictures of dead bodies of people who were smiling. Even you can see their teeth. On the other hand, there are other examples of people when they die, they are, their eyes are open like this, terrified. So what did, the, what did this person see to make him or her smiling? And what did that person see to make him or her be terrified? They have seen something that others did not see. When someone is in this transition period between dunya and akhirah, iman is not accepted anymore. And tawbah is not accepted anymore. And this is what happened with Fir'aun. Fir'aun, when he was drawn in the sea, and he was dying. He started drinking water and he was dying. And he started to see the angels. He saw Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Fir'aun, حَتَّى إِذَا أَدْرَكَهُ الْغَرَقِ After he started to drown, he's dying. قَالَ آمَنْتُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الَّذِي آمَنَتْ بِهِ بَنُوا إِسْرَائِيلِ وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He said, I believe. In the God that Bani Israel, the people of Israel, they believed in. And I am from the Muslims. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, Now you are saying this and you have disobeyed before and you have done a lot of corruption. It's not accepted. So as long as you move, you are moving or enter the transition period between dunya and akhirah, iman is not accepted and tawbah to ask Allah for forgiveness also is not accepted then. It has to be before this. This is one time when tawbah is not accepted and the other time is if yawm al-qiyamah started and the start of yawm al-qiyamah is when the sun rises from the west. This is the actual start of Yawm al Qiyam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Man taba qabla an tatulu'a al-shamsu min maghribiha, taba Allahu alayhi. If you make tawbah before 
the sun rises from the west, Allah will accept your tawbah. So this is about the times of acceptance of Iman. It is accepted at any time, except when you are in the transition between dunya and akhirah, or when the sun rises from the west. If you are, uh, if, if, if you will uh, be in dunya in this time. Yes, question. Yes, when the person is dying. Yes. So what happens is, uh, I, I can tell this more in, in, uh, in details later, but the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in a long hadith about how the Muslim is dying and how the Kafir is dying. The angel of death, Malak al Maut, there is one angel who takes the soul, but he does not come alone. He come together with another group of angels and they are from the angels of mercy of Jannah or the angels of Azab from Jahannam. And they come together and the angel of death stays close to the head and the other angels they sit beside the person and this person will be able to see them. If they are from the angels of mercy, they will be nice, beautiful. If they are from the angels of Adab, they will be ugly and terrifying. So not all angels are nice. Some angels are nice. Some angels are very tough. And if someone see them, he or she will be terrified from how they look. So this is the time when someone is going from dunya to akhirah. Uh, in some of these incidents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let people hear or see something to understand that this person is practicing or, or experiencing something, is able to see something, just for us to learn. But this doesn't happen in all cases. So it is not like that ev everyone who dies uh, his family or her family will be able to see him speaking, oh, I'm seeing nice things or oh, no, I'm seeing bad things. It doesn't happen in all cases, but it happens in some cases just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us uh, a lesson. Did I answer the question? Yeah. You have another one? Yes. Yes, this is also a hadith and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who say the last thing he or she says is La ilaha illallah, this person will be in Jannah. And not all people can say La ilaha illallah. And I know some cases for people that was very easy for them to say and for some people who could not say it. I'll give you just one example. I don't know if I told you about it. One of my teachers, his name is Sheikh uh, Muhammad Hussein Yaqub. He was traveling on, on one of the, um, on, on a road between Cairo and Alexandria, I think. Uh, and he saw a car accident and it was a horrible accident. And it was one boy and one girl in this car. The girl died and the boy was still alive. So he came close to him and he said, say la ilaha illallah. He said, no. He said, you are dying. Say la ilaha illallah. He said, no, I hate him. And he died. He did not say la ilaha illallah. So it depends on how your life was, then how you will end will be. Yeah. So this is about the Iman and uh, about the times of acceptance of Iman. The importance of Iman, which is collected by the method of Da'wah, it is the way to enter Jannah. The way or the tool 
to enter Jannah is Iman. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا You cannot enter Jannah without being believers. So this is the, the tool to enter Iman. Of course, to believe, just to believe, is not sufficient. You need to believe and you need to practice based on this belief. So a true Iman, it, 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 the consequence of this or the proof of this is to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about some people who say that they are believers, but they don't practice. And they say that we think good of Allah. Our hearts are attached to Allah. I feel a lot of spirit with Allah. I don't think that I need to pray. I don't think I need to practice because I have already strong connection with Allah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that those are liars. Uh, sorry, it was not hadith, it was by Ali radiallahu anhu. I say by Ali radiallahu anhu. He said those are liars because if they are true believers, they would practice. But it's easy to, to speak. And you can find a lot of people like this. I know some examples for people who say that I don't need to pray. Because you see, for the, the people who pray, many of them are liars. I don't lie. Many of them are cheaters. I don't cheat. I am better than them. So he's defining the like the, the benchmarks and the rules for himself. So he's leaving the rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined and he's defining rules for himself. If I don't pray, but I don't lie I do, and I don't cheat, I am better than a person who prays and lies or cheats. So he's defining his own rules. But who said that you have to define these rules? You, you had a question? Mm -hmm. Yes, t t today we are introducing the topic of da'wah. Mm -hmm. And then at, at the end, I can I can tell you what we agreed on for, for, for the organization of it. The place of getting Iman, the place to collect Iman, where to collect Iman, when to collect Iman, it has to be collected in dunya. And it cannot be collected after uh, dunya ended or after the major signs have been seen, like the sun comes from the west. And this is the time to collect Iman. The place to collect Iman is dunya. And the place to get benefit of Iman also mainly in dunya, to get the benefit of Iman. So in dunya, you collect Iman and you get benefit of Iman as well. And the benefit of Iman that you get in dunya, it is extended in Akhirah. It's extended after dunya. What does it mean that you get the benefit of iman in dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not pay you for your iman in dunya. It does not mean that if you have iman, then Allah will guarantee that you have a life that is with welfare, that you will be rich, you will not have problems. No, this is not the deal. The deal is that you will have peace in your heart. But you may be poor, you may be suffering, you may be facing a lot of problems, but you will have peace in your heart. So this is the benefit that you get in doing. And this is, for example, what we see uh, for, uh, uh, the brothers of, and sisters in Gaza. They are facing a lot of trouble but they are saying, Alhamdulillah. They say, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. 
they are losing their children, their family members. They are living in very miserable conditions, but they have peace in their hearts. Did you see any of them saying, Ya Allah, why is this happening to us? Have you seen this? Never. The only anger that, that, that uh, with them is they say, where is the Arabs? Where is the Muslims? But no one of them said, Ya Allah, why is this happening? No. So this is the benefit of Iman in dunya. And then in Akhirah, it is Jannah. Then something else about Iman. Iman can increase and can decrease. It's not stable for humans like us. There are creatures that their Iman does not increase and does not decrease. And those are the angels. The angels, their level of Iman is constant. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them in a special way. They don't have the desire to do haram things. And here we have to differentiate between three categories of creatures. There, is, there are two types of power for living creatures. The power of mind and heart. And uh, this is a very important uh, note, so you, you need to note it well. Two types of powers, the power of mind and heart and the power of desire. The power of mind and heart, it has the consequence of being wise and going in the right direction. Angels, they have the power of mind and heart and they don't have the desire. The desire, it means the desire to eat, the desire to have sex, all of these types of desires that you have in dunya, the desire to uh, that, that you want to have fun or watch uh, football, or the, all of these are desires. The angels, they don't have that. Animals, they don't have the type of power of mind and heart, and they have the power of desire. So if you look at animals, whenever they are hungry, they just eat. Just look at cows, dogs, cats, whatever they find, they eat. Whenever they feel hungry, they eat. And they have sex at any time, in any place. There is no control. Then when it comes to human and jinn, human and jinn, and those are the ones who their deeds are counted, their good deeds are counted, and their bad deeds are also counted, and they go to Jannah or Jahannam at the end, they have these two powers. The power of mind and heart, and the power of desire. Both. If you make the power of mind and heart to take control over the power of desire, then you are closer to angels than animals. If you let the power of desire take control and drive of the power of mind and heart, then you are closer to animals than angels. Again, you have these two powers. If you make the first power, power of heart and mind, to take control over the desire, you are closer to angels than animals. If you let the power of desire take control over the power of mind and heart, you are closer to animals than angels. So our Iman as humans and as jinn, because jinn, there are Muslim jinn and there are kafir jinn. When we say shaitan, when we say a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, the shayateen, they are kafir jinn. But there are Muslim jinn as well. And some jinn will go to Jannah, and some jinn will go to Jahannam. For humans and jinn, Iman goes up, 
and goes down. It depends on how you manage. The Iman of the Prophets and Messengers, it always goes up. And this is an essential difference between the Muslim belief and the Christian or the Jewish belief. Because uh, the, the Christians and Jews, if you check the Old Testament and the, and the New Testament, what is written about prophets, there are horrible things about prophets. For example, uh, Prophet Lut, alayhi salam, it is written in the Old Testament that one time he drank a lot of wine and he became drunk and he had sex with his daughters. And this is a prophet. Of course, this is a lie. But this is something, this is how they look at prophets. And when you talk to them, how it is mentioned like this about prophets. So for them, prophets can make huge mistakes like this. But our view and the actual truth about the prophets that they don't do big mistakes. They might make small mistakes, very small mistakes, but they come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, he, he spent a lot of time inviting his people to, to become Muslims. And after he found no answer or no acceptance from them, he decided to leave them without taking permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a reminder that when he was in the ship, there was a storm and he was thrown in the sea and the whale swallowed him and he stayed in the stomach of the whale for some time. And then he was doing a lot of istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness. So this is the type of things that the prophets may fall into, but not the horrible things that the, uh, the Christians and Jews, they say. So for angels, Iman is constant. For us, Iman increases and decreases. For, for prophets, Iman is always increasing. Why? Because their main job is to do da'wah. So when you do da'wah, your Iman will always increase. So the main target of da'wah is to collect iman and to convince people to have iman. And this is the first important lesson, how to invite people to Islam. Many people who do da'wah or talk to people about Islam, they talk in the wrong way. The wrong attitude when you invite people to Islam is to tell them how Islam is nice. You see, in Islam, we have... Um, uh, Islam was the first deen that introduced rights for women. It is true, but it is the wrong way to, to invite people to Islam. Because... It's not that you are inviting people to Islam because Islam is nice. You see, you will have a very nice life when you become Muslim. If you put the hijab, you will be more beautiful. It's not the target. It's not because of this. If you fast, you will feel for the poor. Yes, it is true, but we are not fasting to feel for the poor. We are fasting because Allah told us to fast. And yes, we feel for the poor when we fast. That is, this is true. But the wrong way to sell Islam to people, that you see how nice it is? 
take it because it is nice. Well, then it depends on people's opinion because Islam is not the easiest religion. The, easy, the easiest religion ever is Christianity because it is very, very easy. What is Christianity? Very simple. There is God. This God has a son. That is Jesus Christ. God decided to sacrifice his own son and he was cross crucified and he was tortured and because of this torture and crucifixion he carried the sins of the humanity and this means that anyone who accepts Jesus as Lord and survivor Jesus carried his sins by this crucifixion so whatever sins you commit, they are forgiven because Jesus was crucified to carry them for you. So in Christianity, as a Christian, it is good to pray. But if you don't pray, there is no problem. It's good to give your money to the poor. But if you don't give anything to the poor, there is no problem. It is bad to do zina, for example. But if you do... There is no problem. Jesus will carry it for you. It's bad to kill. But if you do, there is no problem because Jesus carried it for you. Did you see anything easier than this? It is the easiest. In Islam, you have to pray five times. You have to fast Ramadan. You need to do Hajj. You have to give Zakah. When you go to the market, you have only to eat halal food. There are many restrictions in Islam compared to Christianity. So if you compare how easy it is, no, Christianity is much easier. So it's a wrong way to make da'wah to present Islam as a nice thing. The right way to make da'wah is to invite people to believe because it is the truth. There is a creator, and this is the way to worship the creator. It is the true religion. This is how you should convince people to come to Islam. You can mention the advantages of Islam in another context, but not to sell Islam by how nice Islam it is, because people may think that there is another more nice religion. Buddhism, for example, it has a lot of nice things, Hinduism, it has a lot of nice things. So every religion has a lot of nice things. And the deen with the uh, largest number of obligations is Islam. Even the Jews, they say that we find in our books that the children of Ismail or Ishmael, what they call Ismail is the uh, grandfather of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they will be the ones who will pray the most. So the Jews they know that the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it will be the nation that prays the most. So the right way to convince people to join Islam is to convince them with mainly three things. Three things. First that there is one creator for this universe. Second, this creator, uh, the, the book, Quran, the scripture, Quran, is from this creator. It is not written by someone. Third, Muhammad وسلم, is a true messenger from Allah and is not a liar. Because everyone in the world now, everyone in the world now knows that there is a book called Quran. Everyone hears about Quran. And everyone in the world now knows that there, there is a man whose name is Muhammad who claimed to be a messenger. Everyone knows that. And then there are two types of people. 
First type, those who say the Quran, this book, Quran is from God, the creator of this universe. And Muhammad is a messenger from God. He was truthful. He said the truth when he said, I am a messenger. And those are the Muslims. And there is another group of people who say, no, this Quran is written by Muhammad. It's not from God. And Muhammad, when he claimed to be a messenger, he is a liar. And those are the kuffar. So it is important to realize and understand when you find a person who is not Muslim, who tells you, we respect Muhammad. This person is lying. Because it's a simple logic. You know that Muhammad claimed to be a messenger. Do you think he said the truth or not? It's either this or that. If you say no, then he's a liar. How can you respect a liar? Either you believe in him or you cannot say that I respect him. I remember one, uh, one time when I was uh, in like a, a debate with a priest in uh, in Stavanger and he was a politician he was the head of the Arbaita party in Rogolan now he's retired and he was also a priest and he was a supporter for the Palestinian cause this is how we got to know each other uh, in his speech he said that I believe that Muhammad is messenger from God I believe that Muhammad is messenger from God but I believe that Jesus is not just a human. He's much more than that. And he believes that he was crucified to take the sins of humans. Then I told him, you cannot have both. You are trying to be a politician with God. You can do this in the Arbaida party, but not with God. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought the Quran and the Quran says that Jesus was not crucified. So you cannot say that I believe that Muhammad is a messenger, but Jesus was crucified. It doesn't work like this. You can do this with your audience, but not with God. So this point is that to present Islam in the right way, that it is the true religion, not the most beautiful or nice religion. It is for sure the most beautiful and nice religion, but this beauty and uh, sweetness of Islam, this is for people who enter Islam and be sincere and practice Islam. And then after some time, they enjoy doing the worshiping, not for someone who is looking from outside, because they will just see the hardship. I will pray five times a day, it's too much. Fasting, do you really fast the whole day? Don't you even drink water? You know, how, how many times did you hear this question? We all hear this question, not even water. And you know, some, some brothers in the, in the US, they made a, a t-shirt, they were in Ramadan, yes, not even water, so that they don't get this question again and again. People don't believe that. But when they enter Islam and they start practicing it and feel sincere, then they will see. They will understand when we Muslims, you know, uh, Ramadan is either 29 days or 30 days. And then it comes to the day of, you know, the, the night of 29. So either tomorrow is Eid or tomorrow is still Ramadan. And many Muslims, they hope that tomorrow is still Ramadan, even if they will fast one extra day. Why is this? Because they felt the sweetness of Islam. So this is a more advanced step. So don't sell Islam with the sweetness of it to those who did not practice yet. Just tell them the truth. Convince that Islam is the truth. 
and don't oversell Islam. This is also another big mistake that many Muslims, they commit. And we will come to these details also later. Don't make a false selling of Islam. Islam is not yours. It's not ours. It's Allah's deen. It is good as it is. You don't need to hide some things from it so that people can accept it. And you don't need to highlight things and hide other things because people will like this and will not like that. No, you give it as it is. I'll tell you one small example. When I was uh, in Haugesund, I was studying for my research and I, I was also working as Imam in the main masjid in Haugesund. One day, a man came to the masjid and said, I want to be a Muslim, but I'm a gay. Can I be a Muslim? I told him, there is nothing that stops you from being a Muslim. But this problem of being a gay, then he said, I don't see it as a problem. I don't see it as a problem. Then I told him, but in Islam, it is a problem. It is a problem. And it's a major sin for a man to have sex with another man. And it's also a major sin of a man to have sex with a woman without marriage. And marriage in Islam, it can only happen between a man and a woman. A man cannot marry another man in Islam or a woman cannot marry another woman in Islam. So if you want to be a Muslim, you have to accept this as a fact. And then it is between you and Allah. If you will continue doing this, you must know that you are committing a major sin and you need to make tawbah. And then when to make tawbah, this is between you and Allah. But if you still say that, I, I'm, I don't think I'm doing something wrong, then you are not a Muslim and you cannot be a Muslim because you think that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put as a rule is not correct. And you cannot be a Muslim. And this is something very important for you also to understand. If someone does not drink alcohol, does not drink, but believes that alcohol is okay to drink, this person is not a Muslim. If a person believes that alcohol is haram and is drinking alcohol, but he knows it is haram. This person is a sinner and is committing haram, but is still a Muslim, okay? So after I explained this to him, I give him a book that was written by my father, rahimahullah. It's, it's called A Guide to the New Muslim. My father wrote it when he was in the US. After two weeks, he sent me an email and he said, I'm ready to be a Muslim. After two weeks. What do you learn from this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't guide those you like. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to guide. And then we will come to this, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to guide someone and not to guide someone else. So Islam is not yours. You should present it as it is. And then it is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide this person or not. But to go to someone and say, or to give away parts of Islam to convince someone to become Muslim, no, this is haram. Because then you are not sincere. 
you are not honest. You have to tell people everything. You have to tell people everything. And you, if, if you see that they are doing or saying something that is against Islam, you have to highlight it for them. You have to highlight this for them. And then there are skills for uh, convincing people. And this is the main skill for da'wah. Ali radiallahu anhu, and this is a golden rule. This is a very important golden rule. So type it down. Ali radiallahu anhu said, خاطب الناس على قدر عقولهم Talk to people based on their mentality, their mindset. Then Ali radiallahu anhu said, أتريدون أن يكذب الله ورسوله? If you don't do so, then people will deny Allah and will deny his messenger. So if you are giving da'wah in Norway, it is different from giving da'wah in Africa. It's different from giving da'wah in the US. It's different from giving da'wah in China. When you give da'wah to men, it's different from giving da'wah to women. When you give da'wah to old people, it's different from giving da'wah to young people. When you give da'wah to those who are well-educated and they feel you know, themselves and the ego of their academic ranking is different from giving da'wah to those who are humble and they don't feel that themselves that, that much. So it's very important to talk to people based on their understanding and their mindset. And we will mention uh, many examples about that. One one example, let's start with this, with the... Uh, with the small ones. Uh, one man, his name is al Husayn, And he was uh, a rich man and uh, an honorable person in Quraysh. Imran ibn al-Husayn, radiallahu anhu, he brought his father to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Al Hussein came with uh, with some people from Quraysh. Then, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw him coming, he said to the Sahaba, "Give a place to him." So stand up and give him a place. So he showed him respect because he was a leader. And then Al Hussein started talking to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, "Ya Muhammad, what did we hear about you?" You are insulting our gods. You are insulting our gods. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I want to ask you a question. How many gods do you worship? How many gods do you worship? You are saying I'm insulting your gods. How many gods do you worship? So he said, I worship seven. I worship seven. Six on earth, and one in the sky, one in heaven. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you are in a big trouble, which of the seven do you pray to? He said, the one in heaven. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you lost your wealth, your money, whom are you going to pray to? He said, the one in heaven. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is the one that you go to in your hard times. And you make partnership between him and other gods. He said, you are right. He said, will you become Muslim? He said, yes. And he said the shahad. So it was a very simple logic, but it worked with this person. He came attacking Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How dare you insult our gods? If Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
took a defensive approach, then it will not work. But the Nabi Sallallahu was very wise and he had the logic which match the mentality of this person prepared. Then we, we come to another uh, topic that we introduce today before we end. There are different sub-targets for da'wah. The first target is to worship Allah to implement our slavery towards Allah. And this is called Ubudiyya. And Ubudiyya is coming from Abd. And Abd, it means slave. We are slaves of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything in the universe, including us. He created us and he owns us. And this is an owner to be owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word slave, the word slave in the European uh, terminology, it has always an ugly meaning because it refers to people enslaving other people. And Europe has a very dirty history in enslaving other people. And maybe I don't need to mention the details of how the Roman Empire have been enslaving people and letting people fight with the, with lions and fight with themselves, with each other, and uh, and uh, having fun seeing those are killing those. And uh... but when it comes to being slave to Allah, it's an owner. And all of the prophets, they were slaves of Allah. When Isa alayhi salam, uh, one, the first miracle for Isa alayhi salam was not to cure the sick or to bring the dead alive. The first miracle is when he spoke when he was a baby. When his mother, Maryam alayhi salam, brought him to the people of Bani Israel, and she was virgin. She was unmarried. So the people of Bani Israel, they said, who is this child? What have you done? Did you do adultery, zina with someone? Where did you bring this child? So she just pointed to him and he started to speak. The first thing he said, Qala inni abdullah. I am the slave of Allah. Al-Kitaba wa So to achieve the slavery of Allah through worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have to differentiate between two things, two properties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we will come to this in the aqidah part. Allah as ilah, when we say la ilaha illallah, and Allah as Rabb, when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Rabb, it means Lord. And Ilah, it means God. There is a difference between Lord and God. And type this down, we'll come to more details about it, but just write it shortly now. Lord for what he gives to us. Lord is what he gives to us. He created us. He's feeding us. He's giving us. He gave you, you this body. He gave you this mind. He gave you your uh, children, your family. This is Rabb. And, and this is why when, when the first ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillah, we are thanking Allah, Rabbil Alameen. Because we are thanking him in his name the way that he gives to us. But when you say the shahada, you say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. You don't say, Ashhadu Allah rabba illallah. 
I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Because when you become Muslim or when you say the Shahada, God is related to what you do for him, that you worship him, that you pray for him, you make fasting for him, you give the zakah for him, you make hajj for him. So what you do for Allah, that you obey Allah, you do what he told you. So when someone becomes Muslim, if he said, Ashhadu Allah Rabba illa Allah, it doesn't work. He or she has to say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah. Because this is a promise to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rabb, related to what he offered to us. He created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us all what we have, all what you have in your life. This dunya is created by him. Your family, your house, your money, all of these are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. Then the word ilah, God, it refers to your worshipping towards him. So you pray to him. You offer the good deeds, the rituals, the salah, siyam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know that there is something haram, you don't do it. And you do the halal. So all of this is related to what you do for him. So it's bi-directional. From Allah to you, Rabb. From you to Allah, Ilah. And this is why for the, the kuffar, when they were worshipping the statues, they never called them Rabbs. They called them always Aliha, which is the plural of Ilah. Because they used to worship them and to pray to them. But no one from the kuffar claimed one day that they, these statues are giving them anything back because they don't. They know that they don't. None of the statues could give them anything back, but they were still worshipping them. Why? Because the statues cannot tell you what to do. So it's up to you who decide how to worship. Very easy. So the first sub-target of da'wah is to achieve slavery to Allah, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, the first thing that he used to tell to his people, O oh, my people worship Allah, no God but Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرٍ We have sent Nuh to his people. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. There is no God but Allah. So this is the first point of da'wah. Worship Allah, there is no God but Allah. Nothing before that. Don't start with anything before this. وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا To the people of Ad, we have sent Hud. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ He said, O oh my people, worship Allah, there is no God but Allah. Every prophet, he used to say that. وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا To the people of Thamud, we have sent Prophet Salih. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ He said, O oh my people, worship Allah, there is no God but Allah. And the meaning of worshipping Allah in a very simple description is to give priority to the order of Allah on anything else. To give priority to the order of Allah on anything else. Is it not clear? So it means that in any part of your life, in, your, in any place, in any time, if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do something, 
and there is other person or other reason that you should do something else, then you give priority to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants in this situation, even if it will cost you. So at the time of salah, you know that, of course, we have the time of salah is flexible. We have a start time and end time. But you should not pray after the end time. So you should give, give priority to salah within the salah time. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La barak Allahu fi amalin yulhi an salah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not give you barakah. It means you will not have success in any deed that takes you away from salah. And this comes to in any other situation that you know, for example, people want you to say something, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to say something else. Then you have to give priority to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you in this situation. And this we will come to more details Inshallah, when we touch upon this topic next time. So, in brief, let's revise what we have taken today. We spoke about a da'wa ilallah, the concept, the target, and the method. We touched upon, upon the concept and some of the targets, and we did not touch in more details on the methods. And we mentioned what is da'wah, and that it is a method to gain iman, and what is iman, to believe in the unseen, which is ghayb, and the, the uh, classification of unseen things, and some examples of the unseen, and that there are times when Iman is accepted and there are times when Iman is not accepted. And why Iman is important? Because it is the method to enter Jannah. It is the mean, the way to enter Jannah. And the truth of Iman is known by the deeds. So you cannot say I am a believer or mu'min without having good deeds, then you are not truthful. And when, but where to collect Iman is in this life, in dunya. And the main benefit of Iman is also in dunya, which can be extended to akhirah. And the main benefit of Iman is to get peace in the heart, not to get material uh, gainings. And that Iman increases and decreases. For angels, it is constant. For humans, it increases and decreases for prophets. It always increases because their job is da'wah. Also, we mentioned uh, a bit about how to introduce Islam or Iman in the wrong way to sell Islam with how beautiful it is and the right way how to introduce Islam to the others as the truth. And the first thing to offer is to, or, or to, to invite people is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we started on the sub-targets. The first sub-target of Iman is to implement the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as God, to worship him, and we mentioned the difference between Allah as Lord, Rabb, and, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as God, Ilah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as God, it means the one that we worship, the one that we pray, it, 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 it is related to what you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, your, can you raise your voice? Yes. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا We told the angels, 
to make sujood to Adam alayhi salam, they did sujood. Illa Iblisa kana min al-jinni fafasaqa an amri rabbi. Except Iblis, he was from the jinn. So he was not, he was never an angel. He was from the jinn. But he was living with the angels, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the angels. But he was not from them. And this is a difference between Muslims and Christians. Christians, they don't have a different um, a difference between jinn and angels. So they for them, it is the same type of creatures. But for us, when we come to the, the definition of angels, angels are created from light. Jinn are, cre are created from fire. Uh, jinn have the desires. Angel don't have the desires. An angel is much more powerful than the jinn. So an, an angel can destroy this planet in a second, while jinn are much less powerful than angels. So one angel can destroy all of the jinn in the world. So th these are different, but, but we will come to the details of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, the second target of da'wah is to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this one we, we did not touch upon yet. So it is not all, only two, we will come to them. Okay, any questions from uh, Zoom? Okay, then we make dua, inshallah. يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين اللهم قسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا منتهى أملنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واكشف الهم والغم والكرب عنا وعن المسلمين اللهم كن جار إخواننا المجاهدين والمستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم اربط على قلوبهم وبارك لهم في إيمانهم ويقينهم وفي حسن توكلهم عليك وفي رجائهم في رحمتك اللهم عليك باليهود المجرمين ومن والاهم اللهم فرق جموعهم وشتت شملهم وجعل بأسهم بينهم شديدا اللهم رد كيدهم في نحورهم وقذف الرعب في قلوبهم ولا تجعل لهم على إخواننا سبيلا ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب وصل لهم على محمد وآله وصحابه وتبعيه خير وسلم